It was the one thing that I was exposed to all my life. I drink a little, I smoke, I have no problems with any of it. He's a very charismatic person. You could actually go into an audition and say, well, I'm doing this thing with Steven Spielberg. Pretty much could get the job. Everyone is really paying a lot of attention to Kiefer and Julia, and it put a lot of strain in their relationship. I love this guy who was in charge of protecting the future president of the United States, had all these lives in his hands, and he couldn't handle his 15-year-old daughter. I related to that. Kiefer Sutherland is right where he wants to be. As executive producer and star of the hit television show 24, his future has never looked brighter. I don't think there's anybody walking on this planet that could play Jack Bauer like Kiefer Sutherland does. Men want to be Jack Bauer, women want to be with Jack Bauer. Right now, Jack Bauer is the ultimate American hero. He's become the new James Bond. He's almost transcended James Bond. Because the thing about James Bond is he's been played by ten different people. Jack Bauer is only one guy, and that one guy is Kiefer Sutherland. You know, whatever Kiefer does, too, he brings a level of intensity that I don't think most actors can. You see the conviction, you hear it in his voice, you see it in his eyes, and just everything about him just compels you to pay attention. Kiefer's commanding on-screen presence is built from his rugged off-screen lifestyle, as well as the natural talent that he inherited from his father, world-famous actor Donald Sutherland. And there are so many similarities between father and son, in terms of their acting styles, in terms of just physically. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a hell of a legacy to try and live up to. Refusing to be cast as the son of Donald Sutherland, Kiefer threw himself into a series of bad boy roles, launching him as an 80s film icon and tabloid sex symbol. Like his character in 24, Kiefer Sutherland plays by his own rules, and now he has transformed his life and career, breaking away from the bad guy we love to hate to become the television hero we can't live without. In the early 60s, Canadian actors Shirley Douglas and Donald Sutherland were working in Europe, where they met and fell in love. I met Donald in Rome when uh, he came over to do a film, and I was living in Rome. Soon thereafter, Kiefer William Frederick Dempsey George Rufus Sutherland was born on December 21st, 1966, in London, England. Seven minutes before his twin sister Rachel, Within a year, Donald's career took off, and he moved his young family to Los Angeles. Over the next 18 months, he acted in an overwhelming eight films. I was in New York when MASH opened, and uh, a beautiful lady ran down the street. And I thought I knew her, and I, uh, she said, hello. I said, hello. She said, how are you, Don? And I said, I'm fine. And then she gave me a kiss on the mouth, and I said, uh, I don't know you. And she said, no, I know, but I saw your film, and it was turned down. Off she went. But Donald's success took a toll. He had little time at home, and the marriage soon fell apart. I imagine it must have been doubly difficult for Kiefer uh, growing up with two actor parents. I mean, the one thing, of course, they split up when he was quite young. Shirley Douglas was left to raise Kiefer alone. A passionate actress, Shirley became a fixture in Toronto's vibrant theater community, bringing Kiefer and Rachel along to her performances and rehearsals. Kiefer fell in love with the camaraderie he found backstage. I think the one thing that I took away was this unbelievable sense of community. Uh, and the theater really, you get a sense of that probably more than any other medium. Having moved around as much as my sister and I did, we would latch on to anything that represented a family. Uh, and so from a very early age, the theater represented that to us. Kiefer would occasionally visit his father, often on large movie sets. It was an incredible contrast to the small shoestring theaters he associated with his mother. Kiefer also found a role model in his grandfather, Tommy Douglas. Well, I got in a lot of trouble as a kid. I wasn't very good at school, um, and I did. I, got, I had a rambunctious nature, to say the least. And he was the one that always said, when I would be stuck in the corner in so much trouble, he would walk by and say, don't worry, son, you'll be all right. <laughs> and uh, and it would make me smile. And uh, again, he could make you feel confident. And he knew what that could do to someone. In 2004, Tommy Douglas, a powerful member of parliament, was voted the greatest Canadian of all time for his work in creating Canada's renowned health care system. Every man, woman, and child 
in Canada is covered under Medicare. Tommy taught Kiefer to stand by his beliefs, no matter what the cost. A lesson he would turn to throughout his life. I used to go sit and watch him in the House of Commons. There was a gentleness to him uh, and a kindness to him that just radiated. Tommy had a sort of gravitas that couldn't help but enter Kiefer's very bloodstream. His grandfather gave him strength, but his mother taught him passion. At the age of 13, Kiefer watched his mother perform as Martha in the powerful play Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf? What he saw would change his life forever. And I was about 14, maybe 13, 14 years old. He kept it a secret. School was a rolling disaster with Kiefer, absolutely. He, he was too rebellious a spirit, too independent for to, be, to fit into any institution. There, there was there no school that could keep him. It was 1981. Kiefer ran away from school just two months before his 16th birthday. For weeks, he slept under bridges and on park benches in Toronto. As the nights got colder, Kiefer finally called his parents. He told them he wanted to become an actor, with or without their help. At the age of 15, Kiefer Sutherland knew what he wanted to do with the rest of his life. He wanted to become an actor, following the path of his parents, Donald Sutherland and Shirley Douglas. He dropped out of school, moved to Toronto, and began auditioning for every role he could find. One of the only pieces of advice my father's ever given me is if you lie uh, in a performance, they will catch you. And trust me, I've tried it. I've tried to take the quick, easy way, and I've gotten nailed for it. As simple as that advice might sound, it had a profound effect on the last 25 years of my life. In 1982, he landed an audition for the lead role in the Canadian film, The Bay Boy. I, at that time, was 15 and a half, maybe 16 years old, and I was living in a basement apartment in Toronto in an area called the Annex. And I got the call that I had gotten that job, and I remember I had to run outside to jump, because if I had jumped in my apartment, I'd have cracked my head open on the ceiling. Uh, it was one of the great exciting moments I've ever had. The Bay Boy garnered a handful of nominations at the Genie Awards, the Canadian equivalent of the Oscars, including a Best Actor nod for the young Kiefer. One of the three it didn't win was Kiefer's nomination for Best Actor. Um, but it was a hell of a way to start a career. That first moment when you actually believe for a second as, as a young person that you, you're going to maybe be self-reliant, uh, you know, they throw you out of the nest and the wings actually do work. Oh, it, it's, uh, yeah, one of the great moments of my life. And then the, that film got me to the United States. Confident, ready, 18-year-old Kiefer Sutherland packed his bags. Like his father before him, he knew if he wanted to make it big, he'd have to move to Hollywood. So I had moved from Toronto to New York, and I had been offered a soap opera, and I couldn't get an agent in Los Angeles. So I phoned up the agent that I wanted uh, and said, I've got this offer for this soap opera. If I turn it down, will you represent me? And if you won't represent me, then I'm going to take the soap opera and I'm going to do it for a year or two. And she said, if you turn it down, yes, I will start to try and find you work. He scraped together his savings, bought a Mustang convertible, and drove across the U.S. to Los Angeles. By the time he arrived, he was out of money, but determined to make it. And uh, I drove out to L.A. and lived in my car for a while. It's not that he wouldn't have accepted help or been appreciative of help, but he really did want to know that what he was going to achieve, he'd earned himself. I mean, he figured he was set for life at that point. That was The career was just going to go up. Of course, it did. He and his girlfriend lived out of the car for three months. They parked beside a public toilet convenience toilet block, and there was a, an open-air shower that he would run through first thing in the morning, cold shower. And when he did land additions, it didn't show that he was living rough. His break finally came when in 1985 he landed a role in an episode of Steven Spielberg's television series, Amazing Stories. I knew at that time, too, that if you could actually go into an audition and say, well, I'm doing this thing with Steven Spielberg, pretty much could get the job. And so, uh, and the job only lasted 10 days, so I had to go on all these auditions, or as many auditions as I could, so that I could drop this name. The timing couldn't have been better. 
It was the height of Hollywood's love affair with youthful rebellion. It was an exciting time for any young actor, and Kiefer was starting to get noticed. There was kind of a youth quake in pop culture in the 1980s. You had filmmakers like John Hughes making movies. You had authors like Brad Easton Ellis writing books about young people. You very much had the sort of feeling that people in their 20s were rising up and making entertainment, starring in entertainment, and being really hungry for entertainment. Young people were finally being allowed to play young people. And it was one of those things that I knew I was in the right place at the right time.